all, movie lovers. Welcome to Apocalypse Movies. I'm Jacob Bartley. I'm joined by Jake Berlin. Um, this is our review for A Cure for Wellness. This is our non spoilers review, so don't worry if you haven't seen the film and check it out. So, we're going to give our positives, our negatives, and our overall score out of 10, along with our general thoughts on the film. So, if you haven't heard of this movie, it is it stars Dane DeHaan, and it's kind of a horror thriller. Um, I forget the director's name, but he, Gore Verbinski. Yes, he's directed The Ring, the, the original The Ring. The three, the first three Pies of the Caribbean, I think. Yeah, that's that's yeah. right. Yeah, so um, kind of a pretty good director taking on this movie, and this is kind of up my wheelhouse. I love this movies like this, like this type of setting, the horror thriller. Like I love Shutter Island. Mm-hmm. I love creepy movies. Yeah, it's got a lot of comparisons. And Jane DeHaan is one of my favorite young actors working today. I think that guy's got major talent. So I was really looking forward to this movie. Um. But just overall, it, this movie didn't really do it for me. I I guess my expectations were a little too high for what it... Even though they weren't necessarily very high. The trailers were, were good. They were yeah. higher than they should have been. Yeah. And I I just thought maybe the length hurt the film and the slowness, the, the pace was very slow and I thought it might have hurt it. There were definitely some good elements in there. There were things that I really enjoyed and I thought there was promise in there somewhere. But um, ultimately, I left kind of disappointed. Uh, so those are my general thoughts. How about you, Jake? No, I'm kind of on the same boat. And uh, I, I found out just a few hours before we went in to go see it Thursday night how long it was. Oh, and yeah. I was, I was pretty shocked at how long it actually was, like two hours and 26 minutes or whatever it is. And um, yeah, it's it was a lot slower than what I was expecting. And um, I see what they were trying to do with it and the kind of story they were trying to build. But it, it was just way too long for what it should have been. And um, I like Dan Han, like you said. You know, I thought he was really good in the role, and I hope to see more of him. Um, I think it just, it's unfortunate he took a little backlash for the whole Amazing Spider-Man thing. Yeah, and, and he was that. actually good in that Yeah, movie, so, you know? um, and uh, it just, it overall, it wasn't as exciting as I hoped it would have been, and it had, mainly had to do because of the pacing of the film. It was just, it took so long for it to get going. Exactly. Um, you know, it, well over half of the movie into it, you're kind of just sitting there like, wow, like, let's let's get things going here, and so... Um, but I mean, there are definitely good things in the movie, and, and so we'll talk about that here in a second. Yeah, uh, first and <laughs> foremost, Dane DeHaan and his performance. I this guy can carry a movie. Like, yeah, he is the only reason I was entertained throughout the whole movie. Just his performance and seeing what he can do as an actor. Um, like so, he was definitely the the Ex- main. Except how he drinks water. Yes, that was very odd the way he drinks water. Um. <laughs> I thought uh, the scenes with him and the young the girl, I don't know the actress's name or anything, but um, him with the young girl and like when they kind of go off and do their own thing for a little bit and I, I thought that stuff was interesting um, and I also appreciate the idea of this movie. Like what they were going for was very ambitious and I respect that, but it just wasn't executed very well. I kind of, I did a little bit of research after I watched the movie and I figured out like what it was really about and I, I, that wasn't clear to me in the theater so like I thought the idea was great but it just wasn't executed well so I really appreciated the idea and there was some very creepiness to it and I I like when directors go as far as you can kind of go they take a risk and they went pretty damn far yeah. as far as like mm-hmm. inappropriate stuff and vulgarity and stuff like that so I I appreciate that even though I didn't love how, like what specifically they did when they went too far I appreciated how far they went. So uh, those are some of the things that I took away from it as positives. What about you, man? No, I am literally I'm exactly the yeah. way you are. Like, it, those are exactly my positives. Dana Han is probably the best thing in the movie. Um, he He's strong from beginning to end until we see him. It's And it's a very different role from what we've seen him before. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and it gets me excited to see him in Valerian. Valerian, this year. And, that's going to be very different as well. Luke Masson, much bigger movie. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and I also, I also, I like what they were kind of going for. Although it didn't pan out, it wasn't executed very well. I do like what they were trying to do. Yeah, for sure. And the concept of the of the movie was really strong. Uh, like we had said, it's a very that kind of goes to show movie. why the trailers appealed to yeah. us because the idea of what they were going for is in exactly. the trailers. Yeah, and it's it's like we had said, it's a very Shutter Island type movie. Um, so it definitely intrigues you. It makes you think and, and wonder. Um, and then it, obviously, uh, like you had said, the just the risk to go as far as they could. Um, is very strong because you're watching it and you're cringing at some of the things mm-hmm. and a lot of directors just don't do that in movies when they should do it. Yeah. And so I definitely applaud Gore Verbinski for doing it. 
Um, it didn't work out as well. He didn't hold back, exactly. and I respect that. Yeah, and respect there's that. many scenes within the movie of that happening, and you're kind of just like, wow, they're they're it actually doing this. It makes you uncomfortable, this. and that's yes. what it's supposed to do, and it succeeds exactly. at doing that. Exactly, the uncomfortability was definitely that's actually a great word. So. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's, Um, but yeah, obviously we were not thrilled with this movie, so I'll let you take this one first. What it, what didn't work for you? The the predictability, like yes. I knew right away what talking was going about on. Shutter Island, very unpredictable for yeah. me at least. Yeah. I knew exactly what how this movie was yes. going to end, who was what, mm -hmm. where it was going, and it was very. No, I, I completely agree yeah. with you. It's just it's these type of movies, specifically these type of movies, you want to be able to have a mystery around it. To exactly. Yeah. And from the moment something happened on screen, you knew right away where it was going, and it kind of took you out. And especially being a two and a half hour movie, you have to keep the audience on your toes, and it just wasn't able to do that. And so that's definitely one of them. Uh, I think the stuff with Jason Isaac's character was kind of a, a, a not an underused or just kind of an undervalued position, I guess you could say. Um, I think he could have been used in a different way that that would have helped the story. And was um, he the main doctor? Yeah, he was the, the main guy. guy? Yeah, okay. the main guy. And uh, so no, he's actually in that that show I was talking about on Netflix. The um, the OA. Yeah, the OA. Oh, okay. He, okay. It's, he plays a very similar role in that. So apparently, this guy likes playing a creep. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, good to know. Uh, so after that, I think uh, the last thing that I can talk about is because we've talked about the runtime, but there are so many things in this movie that they're just unnecessary. Yeah, for sure. And it's like the opening scene, pretty much unnecessary. Yeah, um, def I mean, for the, sure. Yeah, and then I think just like the ending was just weird and there's so many scenes within the movie that you're questioning like, why is this important and whatnot? And um, so that's it, it, for me it comes down to the length and the pacing of the movie and that's kind of just pretty much where my disappointment came from so yeah going into the the pacing um, I thought this movie could have been an hour 45 and you could have <laughs> like you could have taken the exact same film cut out like 45 minutes of it and it probably would have been pretty good or at mm -hmm. least a lot better than what we got um, there's so m and this is not really a spoiler but there's so many scenes we know he's in like a psych ward so there's so many scenes of him like creeping around the hospital trying to investigate and figure things out and it's like why are you wasting so much time just showing him walking and like looking through stuff and the dude's on crutches so it takes even longer exactly <laughs> and um i thought the crutches were actually pretty clever because it limited him to what he could do he could have just ran away exactly but yeah. no because he's on crutches um so that was pretty clever but just as far as like wasting screen time with unnecessary like lengths of just wandering around and also like they play like this psych ward has like high security, but like they don't see him walking around. Like it kind of just was unbelievable to me. And um, also, I thought there was unnecessary the dialogue with random like vulgar things out of nowhere for no reason. And they did it like three or four times, and like they don't do it again. Like the it was very inconsistent. Like some of the stuff some of the characters say, especially in the beginning, there's this one line. I was like, where did that come from? Like that does not fit in this tone. And then it just throws you out of the movie out of nowhere. So that kind of just took me out of it several times throughout the movie. But overall, I think, like you said, the length and the pacing was just all off. And then, like, there's so much going on that you don't get to grasp what it's really about. So yeah. um, that's why I ultimately ended up really disappointed. Yeah, no, I, it, there, one good thing about it is it's actually a very beautiful film. The way it looks. Oh, no, We haven't absolutely. talked about that. But, you know, you're, set no, you're Switzerland right. and... The, the Swiss Alps yeah. and this giant castle and they on the top keep of emphasizing the on that like why would anyone want to leave here it's kind of like the setting exactly. like how beautiful it yeah. looks and yes it was well shot yeah. and it looks great another reason why the trailers got me really excited <laughs> because it looks so great yeah. um, this is just an example of like I, I need to like limit my expectations because this was right at my wheelhouse with an actor that I really like so I just got to kind of go in with a clean slate like have like a medium expectations in the future no I agree with you, yeah. you. alright well uh, with that being said let's give our scores out of 10 uh, what do you got Jake yeah no I I went in with you know mild expectations maybe not as high as you I like these kind of movies um, and you know again that Shutter Island type movie because it yeah. kind of keeps you on your toes uh, but I walked out just disappointed in you know the length the pacing and whatnot. so I'm going to give like here for one is a 5 out of 10 Wow, that's that's pretty low. Yeah. Um, I I think I may have appreciated a little bit more than you because I just I I don't know I, I like that creepiness. Not well, that it's you a, don't, it's the but it kind of worked too. a little bit for me. It's a and especially Dane DeHaan, like every 
time that guy's on screen, uh, it works for me. Uh, I'm going to give A Cure for Wellness a 6.5 out of 10. Um, it just missed the mark for me. I say you shorten it, tighten it up a little bit, it, may, it gets a 7 for me. Yeah. But um, it, yeah, it just, it just fell short, and I... I like the idea, and it, it just, I want more movies like this, so hopefully we see some uh, some more horror thriller types in the future. If you do go check this out, do you know if I watch it at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, you will fall asleep. Yeah, probably, especially <laughs> in cushioned recliner chairs yes. at Century Theaters, which are awesome, but very dangerous to fall asleep in. Alright, well that's going to uh, do it for our review of A Cure for Wellness. What did you think of the film if you've seen it? Uh, if you haven't seen it, let us know if you're excited for it, or you have any questions about what we thought, let us know in the comments section. Uh, again, I am Jacob Bartley. This is Jake Berlin for Apocalypse Movies. Please subscribe and hit that like button. And until next time, take care.